What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel, and welcome to a uh, snowy Massachusetts. Um, nothing for me today. I actually got a text from my dad saying that he's at the shop, and he's got something that he wants to show off, so let's get this thing brushed off, and we'll head over to the shop and see what he's got. Alright, we're over at the shop. Pops has got his truck here. Came all the way back from Georgia with this big crate. I'm sure you guys already kind of know what's in it, but I was impressed. Here, carbon fiber ratchet straps. Pretty impressive. So, came back with a whole bunch of parts on the back side because unfortunately, it's not a Mopar in that box. Ours is direct broke. I want to go polling this year. <laughs> so, the hopes to go to Keystone with this, right? Two weeks, we got a lot of work. <laughs> so, that's the plan. He's got a whole bunch of midship plate, we gotta get the engine out, we're gonna try and get the truck in today, get it placed in so he can start working on figuring out things to order from Summit this week, so time to start working on uh, making a Chevy fit in a Dodge. When you go to the dark side, everything's different. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna have to start wearing dresses, we're going to poles now. So the first set of parts we got borrowed is from the Pennsylvania Hitchcocks, is flywheel the bolt to the back, MSD box, starter, and a midship plate to bolt everything up. Then from the uh, Hitchcocks in Massachusetts, I think I'm gonna be running out today, gonna get a clutch can, and what else are we gonna get? Headers, headers. And then that should be all the major parts, so. All our power parts to get to Keystone. All our pile of parts to get to Keystone, maybe one or two summit orders with expedited shipping in between. So, now we just gotta get it out. A little update. Skid steer's dead. I'm gonna move the tires. They're all stuck to the ground. <laughs> One on 200 amp? Yeah. It's already on 200 amp. All right, update. Uh, skid steer wouldn't take it on 200 amp, so we the truck over. Maybe we'll have to twin them up, but. You can do it. Come on, start up. Get the Bobcat. There's my trailer. You don't have anything there, bud. Nothing? Come on, baby. What happened when you stole all your diesel trucks? So we've been saying it's a Chevy, but what exactly is in the box? Can you tell them? Uh, it is a 650 cubic inch, 4.9 Chevy base motor with uh, profiler heads on it. And the heads say Schmidt on them? Yeah. Did he build the whole thing? It came back, it was freshly rebuilt in 2017. It's been sitting ever since. Yeah, and he, he was telling me before we uh, took it out that like, was it new block, rods, cranks? Like, pretty much the only thing you thought was left over was like the castings for the heads, right? Castings for the heads, intake, and injection. So, I mean, he said it's been sitting for a little bit, had a fuel pump that he got sitting in marble that he said thinks is in good shape. So, I think he got a home run on this one. So, we'll open it up and I get to see what's inside. Now, he already saw it, so. We 
way to it. Sorry, it was on the dyno. Like this part is tuned? Yeah. So explain, can you explain it real quick for like, so this is gonna be your feed in. Yeah. This is the shut, the return when the fuel is shut off. Yep. That's froze, so I can't do anything with that yet. Then these, this would be your pill. Okay. You know, so you, that's how you adjust the richness or leanness of it. Just the total pressure. Total pressure. Yep. Yeah. And then and this is gonna be a high speed lean out. To control the top side of pressure? To con control the top side of pressure. And this is a return for um, whatever bypasses through the barrel. So there's a mechanism in here that's gonna do something? It just passes by. Some goes down in and to the block, and then feeds the... Yeah, and then here just is direct port injection just spitting right down on top of the valve. And when the valve opens, it's a big old a fuel. What do you think? I'm think... sorry, girl. We're gonna do a Gia. It's a heart transplant. I think you're gonna be fast friends. And I think you came from a monkey. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. All right. So when I left last, we had just taken this out of the crate, and I was leaving to go get some headers and cans from the Hitchcock. So you guys obviously, you know, got it in and have done. You've done a lot with it. So we want to catch everybody up with your week. Uh, basically, once the motor was in, we had to cut the body so so the body would clear. Uh, had to relocate the vacuum pump. Had to get a belt for that. Uh, yeah. Did all the fuel lines. Got those all set. And we switched the oil tank from side to side because the oil pump on this motor is on that side. Yeah. Got a new vacuum container. Had that that. Mounted up back here, we've got an expansion tank. Thanks to the boys at Bedard Sheet Metal. Yeah, oh, that's for and that's for the water because this engine has water. Yeah. In the block or in the just in the Both. heads. Both. So that will does it flow through or is there a yeah. separate? Okay. Eventually, I'll have a pump on the front, but I'm going to run it without a pump right now. So it's just stagnant water. Yeah. So Bedard's welded on the two. It, tanks don't come with it welded on the 12 AN fittings. Yeah. I had them, did this bell crank for the throttle. But Ard's welded that up. Yeah. I've got a can coming tomorrow, my own. Thank Ralph for, for this one so that we could get everything mounted. Yeah. And But Ard's are going to weld in the starter pockets. Here's a little starter pocket down here. Because on these motors they change the starter to this side for a different pan because it gets 10 horsepower when the starter's there. So they say. On the other side. And it just makes a more expensive can so it's probably a conspiracy. But other than that it's just been getting everything to fit. Uh, got the starter in. Thanks to Will Hitchcock for that. <laughs> Borrowing a lot of Chevy parts from uh, Ford guys that are named Hitchcock. Huh? So all the Poland community here in the Northeast <laughs> is really helping me out to get... Down to Keystone. Yeah, I think they just feel bad for a smoke park. <laughs> yeah. It is funny how everyone does run Chevys, even though they're all in Ford bodies. Yeah, so Chevys and Chevys too. So, and my job now is he's got this enough done to where I can start on the wiring. I did a little bit, but got to get the... Uh, starter line over, wire the box up to the data logger, to the switch. We have to redo all, a lot of the electronics going from a magneto to standard ignition. So we just print out the instructions so we don't cook the box. Cook the box and make sure we do it right. So, all right, a little update for where we're at. It's a little bit like two in the afternoon right now. I spent the day doing some wiring. So we got all this stuff. So like. Uh, I'm trying to learn all this stuff and not fuck it up. So these two wires go up front to the crank trigger. This is like a valet kill switch, so this actually tees in to um, the kill switch in the truck. 
Then this is gonna be our tack output that goes to the data logger. Then these two are just um, positive, negative. And then this guy is just a positive 12 volts for when we want the actual um, whole box to be on. And this is our main juice, not the prettiest solder. I actually have some DT Doge connectors or whatever that I'm ordering so I can do a plug connection here. Maybe I'll make it like a flange or something to make that nice, but... Got the wiring taken care of. My dad's on his way out to pick up some more battery cables so we can do the big feed for the starter. Uh, I tested the starter solenoid, it pulls in, so now we just need the big cable to go from the batteries to the starter for that to start. So, while he's gone, I'm just working on getting these sensors laid out the last little bit for the data logger. And then, uh, depending, probably just turn the data logger on, make sure everything works. See if I need to change anything around. Oh, we are changing one thing, like a block temp. We're going to a water temp because this has water. The other one was just solid, so we just have a temp sensor on it. But that's about it. I mean, we're in really good shape. My dad's done a whole lot of work during the week to get it to where it's pretty simple. And it's not really like you're changing a whole lot going from a Mopar to a Chevy at this rate because there's no ECM or anything. It's, everything is just a standalone. It's point system to an MSD box instead of a Magneto. There's a couple things. Change the kill. I mean, everything on the old truck was that you're switching the ground, so now we're switching power. So it's a little bit of a pain, but. No, just, just like this, because the spark plugs are going to spray. Yeah, So what they're playing with now is apparently they're using let me see if I can zoom in little shims on top of the starter to bring it down because it sounded like it was too tight on the flywheel. So this is this is what they look like. Put on there. Hopefully I can not get sprayed in the face with water this time. Ready? Yep. Yeah. So we're officially one week away from when we should be in Keystone, right? It's Wednesday, yeah. making a test pass Wednesday, and you've been screwing with this bellhousing all week. Can you kind of tell the people what you had to do to get this used bellhousing? Uh, needed a starter pocket welded in on the driver's side. Okay. So Bedard Sheet Metal took care of that for me. And then when it came back, it was a little bit too small on the inside to pass the ring gear. We had our crank mount starter, it would have fit perfect. So you've been kind of fighting with the can all week, but you've, you had to cut in this. Yeah, this can didn't have an inspection port, so I had one, George cut it out, and I had to drill to mount the profab because this came off a tractor where they just run a shaft off the back, so. It's kind of like what they do for the all-in-one reversers now. Or it might have come off a two-wheel drive. Yeah. So either way, there wasn't anything bolted directly to it. But this thing pretty much fought you the whole way that one, that getting one, in. Yeah. But you're thinking you're good now with it? It's fun and... I think, I think that's all set. Awesome. Now I just got to make sure my shield's clear in the back. What shields? The drive shaft. I got to put the drive shaft on. Oh, yeah. The yep. jack shaft. Yeah. And then I had it in there before on Ralph's can, so it should be right. If not, I might have to have a beer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, just to make sure that it fires and the ignition works. You know, and then at that point, 
I got to change, put the right back tires on it. Uh, it's got to get cleaned up. I mean, so like we, it might not get cleaned up. It's going to be what it is. What we were talking about yesterday, it's, you're not out of time. You just have just enough time. As long as I'm trying to find all the things that are going to kick me in the teeth. Okay. Fuel? Yep. A little more. Unplug the tack. Unplug the tack. Well, out of the box. Are you not getting the readings? No. I don't know if that's doing something. Okay. I'm going to create this. Okay. Yep. 